Hey guys, Mislo is here on the other side of the screen. And in this tutorial, we are going to cover what we are going to cover in this tutorial series. So basically, I will give you an overview of the structure of this tutorial series and a list of topics that we are going to cover in more or less depth. So the first topic, and I'm just going to call it theory, is essentially a topic where we are going to cover the theoretical underpinnings of an operating system. Now, you may think to yourself, well, why is this really that important? Well, I have a great analogy for this. So let's say that you were trying to understand how a particular car works. So let's say that you were interested in how Toyota works. Well, if you don't understand how cars work in general, you're going to have a hard time understanding how Toyota works. Because if you don't understand cars in general, understanding how Toyota works with, with its specifics to Toyota, that's going to be really hard, okay? And the same thing applies to operating systems. So essentially, when you are dealing with operating systems, whether it is Linux or any other operating system, it is a very good idea to understand the general underpinnings behind operating systems and basically anything that helps you understand operating systems on a general level, because then you are going to understand other things so much better and things are just going to make much more sense. Okay, so remember this as the analogy, as you buying a car, uh, not you buying a car, but you trying to understand how cars work and you not understanding how cars work in general is going to lead to you not understanding how a specific car works. However, if you understand how cars work in general, it's going to be much easier to understand how a specific car works. And in this analogy, Linux is just a specific kind of operating system. Okay, so the second thing we are going to cover are going to be basic commands. And I'm just going to write abbreviations for this. So this stands for basic commands. And honestly, this is probably going to be a bit boring uh, because you're, you'll are you just have to memorize these. Uh, but these are the bread and butter commands. Okay, so these commands in this section are the bread and butter commands. You'll use them almost every day, uh, especially if you're a software engineer, you're going to use them massively. And I actually recommend that you make flashcards for these commands. And even though flashcards are frowned upon and kind of laughed at, flashcards actually help me personally when I'm studying. So I actually recommend using some flashcards and memorizing these commands by heart, okay? So I think that's gonna facilitate your learning. After that, we have pipelines, which I'm just going to abbreviate as pipes, and some other stuff. So basically pipelines are a way for you to chain commands and you're also going to use uh, this in your day-to-day -day life a lot, especially if you're a software engineer, but we're also going to talk about some related things such as input, output, redirection here, and that's also going to be important. And then we are going to talk about command types. Okay, CT stands for command types. Again, I'm just writing this abbreviated so that I don't have to write it all out. And we are going to talk about finding files. Now, basically command types and finding files uh, command types, this is just more informative so that you understand what command types are out there so that you gain a better understanding in the Linux operating system. And finding files is something that you will use, especially if you're a software developer. So this is going to be really important. Then the fifth section is going to be about command history. So this is command history so that you can access the commands that you previously wrote. This is used fa fairly frequently. And we are going to talk about variables, okay? And variables are actually something you may be familiar with if you're a software engineer, but if you're not a software engineer, don't worry, I'm going to explain everything as we go along. And basically variables are important because every single computer program and that even includes operating systems uh, have variables within them. And variables are just locations in your memory that store certain values which are relevant for the program running on the computer. And essentially you can tweak some operating system variables and by tweaking them, you can add something, basically tweaking means adding something to them or maybe removing something from them. 
and that way you can modify your operating system's behavior uh, or you can do some other cool stuff which we are going to discuss when the time comes for those things okay so that's it then we are going to talk about text editors okay then we are going to talk about text editors and here uh, you can actually skip this section but uh, we are going to have checkpoints so checkpoints are going to be videos where i will motivate a particular topic and so i will in each single checkpoint so checkpoint comes after we review the previous section so basically let's say we are going from section five to section six uh, we are going to cover all the material in section five that's how this is going to look like we are going to cover all the material all the material in section five we are going to review the most important things and then we are going to have a checkpoint and in the checkpoint i'm going to point you to the most important things and i'm going to tell you if you can skip a certain part uh, if you are not in the interest group so for example text editors you don't really need to understand how to edit text in the text editors we are going to cover if you are, for example, a regular desktop user. So you can skip this part, but again, as we come to that part and as you watch the videos beforehand, uh, you will get to that part and then you will hear me emphasize, uh, can you skip it, can you not skip it? Uh, who is this uh, certain uh, section for? Uh, that is, I mean, everybody can watch it. And if you have time, I encourage you to watch it. But if you're kind of short on time, there's certain people that are going to benefit from this. And those are software engineers and system administrators and information security experts. However, if you're a regular desktop user, you really don't need to understand uh, a lot about the text editors we are going to cover. Okay, so, but no worries. We are going to cover all of those in the checkpoints, which are going to be a part of this um, a part of this uh, tutorial series. And, and also we are going to have reviews where we are going to review everything we have learned in these sections. Uh, then we are going to talk about processes. So processes, okay. And basically uh, we are going to talk about those. Uh, that's going to be fun. You're going to learn what processes are. You are going to understand uh, how they work and everything related to them and how to manage them. So this is going to be pretty cool. Then we are going to talk about, and it's actually really weird for me to talk and write on this graphical drawing thing at the same time. It's actually going pretty good, but I hope my uh, writing skills don't deteriorate over the course of this uh, tutorial series. Uh, anyway, we are going to talk about file permissions. So file permissions. And this is really important because files have permissions. And usually when you don't understand how they work, you may encounter some issues with changing certain files uh, and stuff like that. So that's going to be very useful for you to understand what's going on uh, when you are giving certain permissions to certain users uh to certain files okay so i just said a lot of things but don't worry uh in due time everything is going to be explained then we are going to talk about compression and we are going to talk about package management so compression is basically this idea that you can compress information so uh, uh, le let's take this tutorial series for example so if i was perfectly efficient with the transformation of information I probably wouldn't have filler words. I probably wouldn't stop in my speech. I would be like a robot that would deliver you information efficiently without any filler words, without any stops or whatever. I would just deliver the information completely free from any other non-relevant information. Uh, and compression is actually here to compress the information. So for example, if I could, give you the overview with all of the relevant information in five minutes. And if I can give you this overview in 10 minutes, which is most likely, or even more, which is uh, how long this video is going to last, uh, then uh, I could actually compress the information I want to give you in less time. So the same idea applies to compression. You're not only comp compressing the tutorial, you're actually compressing information, which is stored on your 
uh, hard drive or anywhere else. Okay, so compression is about compressing information. Uh, that, that's the point of this. And package management is a way to install software on the Linux operating system. Uh, then we are going to talk more about files. So here we are going to talk about file permissions. And here we are going to talk about files uh, in more depth. Okay, so I'm going to write files in D. That means files in depth. And we are really going to cover a lot of things which are related to files here, which are really important for you to understand how files work, etc. Um, then we are going to cover... Uh, so this is 10, okay, this is 11. I actually have my notes opened up on my phone so that I know what I'm talking about. Uh, on 11, we are going to cover the boot process. We are going to cover a user space startup and we are going to cover a system shutdown, okay? So boot process, user space startup and system shutdown, we're just going to overview the steps which your computer goes through when it's booting up the operating system, when the user space starts up, and when the uh, system is shutting down, okay? So this is going to be pretty fun. Um, and yeah, make sure, I, I didn't emphasize this, but make sure to take a look at the video descriptions uh, in, in every single one of the tutorials because they usually contain references and maybe some other relevant information. So yeah, definitely check out the, the video descriptions as well as the video uh, if you are interested not only in the references, but maybe in some additional information, uh, which maybe for some reason wasn't covered in the uh, tutorial. That's uh, what I wanted to kind of stress. Okay, so this is more conceptual. You're probably not going to use this uh, kind of concretely, but again, it does paint the picture of the Linux operating system and massively helps your understanding of how things work. Uh, then we are going to talk about a whole bunch of topics and I'm just going to term this as WBOT, which basically means whole bunch of topics. And we are going to talk about computer networking related commands. We are going to talk about building programs from source and other stuff. And again, we're just going to graze over those, not really uh, going in, into depth in all of these, uh, but just kind of grazing over them so that you understand what they mean. And finally, this is the 13th uh, subject, we are going to talk about shell scripting, okay? And we are going to finish off with that, and that's going to be our final thing we are going to talk about. And again, uh, we are going to have reviews, we are going to have checkpoints, so you are going to be informed of everything that is coming your way, and if you want to skip a certain section, you will uh, have the relevant information in the checkpoint where I will suggest to you, should you skip it, should you not skip it? Why is this important? And why is this section uh, in and of itself uh, important to understand, to uh, grasp the uh, Linux operating system, sort of uh, big picture view of the Linux operating system, okay? So this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you'll keep watching. I hope you will keep uh, watching the videos as they come out. I hope you'll leave me feedback. Hope you'll subscribe. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. See you in the next tutorial. Talk soon.